25, 2021. At this time, Lisa Young will take a roll call to see if we have a quorum present. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the committee, when I call your name, please respond. Nancy Allen. Present. Stan Ballone. Present. Dave Berry. Benjamin Bitter. Walter Bouchard. Kim Butler. Here, thank you. Thank you. Derek Castaneda. Present. Thank you. Aaron Chavez. Beverly Chanowski. Present. Thank you. Tim Connor. Present. Thank you. Michael Denby. I am here. Thank you. Scott DeBias. Present. Thank you. Robert Forrest. Present. Thank you. Elizabeth Foster. John Woods. Present. Thank you. Thank you. Rhonda Humbles. Present. Thank you. Hondo Judd. Michelle Kamikawa. Spencer Camps. Martin Lucero. Here. Thank you. Peter Margoliner. Joseph Martini. Present. Thank you. Amanda McGinnis. Present. Thank you. JC Porter. Here. Thank you. Mario Saldamondo. Megan Sheldon. Present. Ramona Simpson. Susie Stevens. Ramona Simpson's here. Thank you. Edward Stillings. Here. Thank you. Steve Trussell. Kai Yumeta. Present. Thank you. Robert Vandenacher. Present. Thank you. Kristen Watt. Present. Thank you. Michelle Wilson. Present. Thank you. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Great, thank you. In that case, we'll call this meeting to order. Um, remember that uh, if you are not speaking to mute your phone, um, and otherwise we're all participating virtually this time. The second item is a call to provide to members of the public to provide input written content to their quality technical advisory committee on items that are not on the agenda that are within the jurisdiction of the We can't hear anything. Hello. I think some of us are here. Yeah, I don't know. We lost our. We lost the mag, folks. What it sounds like. Oh, we can carry on a conversation on. Well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can you say? Technology, right? We're having fun in COVID, that's for sure. <laughs> Hopefully here in uh, my summer, we'll be back to somewhat a little bit more normal. Can you all hear me all right? This is Lindy. 
Hi, Lindy, I can hear you. Okay. All right. Um, Craig. We lost the chair. We, we lost the chair. All right, we'll wait a few minutes here. Um, Craig, is there anything you can do to, to help with the audio? Um, no, it looks like it's on his end. He started getting fractured and then disappeared. So I'm not, I haven't seen him come back yet. Okay. It might be his internet connection. It, it could be, it's pretty windy this way. Yes, it, it is over in the East Valley as well, Wendy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in the East Valley. He's in the East Valley. Oh, okay. Um, somebody just put out a chat that uh, John Sherrell said he's still not getting any, any audio either, so. So I, I'm assuming that John can't even hear us talk. Right. Hey, Lindy, this is Megan. Do you want me to read the call to the audience and try to keep the meeting going? Yeah, that, that would be my uh, next thing to do here. Let's see, I'm looking at the time here. Okay, why don't you go ahead and, and do that, Megan? Thank you for offering. <laughs> okay, hopefully they'll uh, jump in here soon. Okay. And hopefully you guys can all hear me. Um, so call to the audience, I think is where John, uh, the chair broke up. So an opportunity will be provided to members of the public to provide input through written comment to the Air Quality Technical Advisory Committee on items that are not on the agenda that are within the jurisdiction of MAG or, uh, or on items on the agenda for discussion, but not for action. Members of the public are asked to submit written comments related to this meeting through the MAG website and indicate uh, for which meeting the, the comment is intended. Comments may be sent at any time leading up to the meeting, but must be received at least one hour prior to the posted start time. Comments received um, to the deadline will be read out loud. Do we have any comments? Madam Vice Chair, we did not receive any public comments. Okay, thank you very much. I'm just pausing to see if John came back on. Um, okay, so we will go ahead and move on to item number three, which is approval of the February 25th, 2021 meeting minutes. Um, can I get a motion for approval? So moved, surprise. Thank you, Mr. Aye. Who was this, the second? Oh, sorry, Tempe. Tempe, okay, thank you very much. So I have a motion to approve and a second. Uh, I believe we do a roll call. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Members of the committee, when I call your name, please state your vote. Nancy Allen. Yay. Thank you. Stan Ballone. Aye. Thank you. Kim Butler. Aye. Thank you. Derek Costaneda. Aye. Thank you. Beverly Chanowski. Aye. Thank you. Tim Connor. Aye. Thank you. Michael Denby. Aye. Sorry, I couldn't buy my mute button. Aye. Thank you. Scott DeBias. Aye. Thank you. Robert Forrest. Aye. Thank you. John Woods. Aye. Thank you. Rhonda Humbles. Aye. Thank you. Michelle Kamikawa. Aye. Thank you. Martin Lucero. Aye. Thank you. Peter Margoliner. Joseph Martini. Aye. Thank you. Amanda McGinnis. Aye. Thank you. JC Porter. Aye. Thank you. Danae Pressler. Aye. Thank you. Mario Saldamondo. Megan, Megan Sheldon. Aye. Ramona Simpson. Aye. Thank you. 
Kai Yubeta? Aye. Thank you. Robert Bondenacher? Chris and Watt? Aye. Thank you. Michelle Wilson? Aye. Thank you. Madam Vice Chair, we have a unanimous vote. Okay, thank you. Does not look like the chair has returned yet, so we will go ahead and continue on to agenda item number four. And I apologize, I don't have all the details of who's presenting what. So um, this will be the uh, 2020 Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality Improvement Program Annual Report. Thank this you very John. much. Welcome back, John. Thanks, I apologize. I'm not sure what happened on my end. We were just starting agenda item four, so please go ahead. Okay, no problem. <laughs> uh, Dean Giles will give the update on the CMAC annual report. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. We are pleased to provide the congestion mitigation and air quality improvement program annual report for the year ending September 30th, 2020. Federal Highway Administration guidance requires that an annual report be prepared that includes the projects from the prior federal fiscal year and the expected air quality benefits. Uh, by the deadline uh, at the end of uh, February 2021, the annual report had been submitted to the Federal Highway Administration's Arizona Division Office. This year, the 2020 CMAC annual report contains 28 projects. Each project includes the project description, uh, cost information, and the estimated emission reductions for VOCs, CO, NOx, and PM10 and kilograms per day. And, and where appropriate uh, in the PM 2.5 non-attainment areas, the estimated PM 2.5 emission reductions are provided. And this includes a project in the Pinal County PM 2.5 non-attainment area, and also a project that has been included by the Arizona Department of, Admin Arizona Department of Transportation uh, for one of the projects in the Santa Cruz County Arizona area. MAG staff calculated the estimated emission reductions using project data that the, our member agencies had provided to MAG uh, with their original project application. And uh, MAG worked closely with the Arizona Department of Transportation staff on the report. And, and then just to highlight a couple of projects in the report, on the second page, there is a uh, City of Phoenix paved alley project. This is a, a project for 25.7 miles and also a Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian Community paved unpaved road project for two miles. And so both of these projects will um, contribute to uh, emissions reductions for PM10. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my presentation. Thanks, Dean. Are there any questions on that item? Okay, hearing none and assuming my uh, mic's still working, we'll move on to agenda item number five, which is the 2021 MAG CMAC methodologies, and Dean will also give that presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. <clears throat> uh, recently, uh, MAG uh, embarked on a project to update the MAG CMAC methodologies. And just first to give a little bit of background on that, um, there is a presentation. I don't know if we're seeing the presentation at this point. A second slide of the presentation. Uh, the purpose of the uh, CMAC program is to fund transportation projects and programs that will contribute to attainment or maintenance of federal air quality standards. 
Uh, CMAT guidance from the Federal Highway Administration requires an assessment of the project's expected emission reduction benefits and cost effectiveness. And this is to better inform the selection of projects. Next slide. <clears throat> MAG developed CMAC methodologies that are used to evaluate proposed projects for the estimated emission reduction and cost effectiveness. And this is done uh, during the committee process and prior to selection of the MAG, uh, selection of projects for the MAG Transportation Improvement Program. And MAG has updated the methodologies periodically. Um, the methodologies uh, were for, first drafted in, in 1999. And then over time, they've been updated to address changes in federal guidance, uh, new project types, and improved technical methods and assumptions. The last update occurred in, in 2011. Next slide. So in 2020, MAG contracted with Texas A&M Transportation Institute to review our existing MAG CMAC methodologies. <clears throat> and so they um, conducted a review of other CMAC methodologies that are used elsewhere in the United States. And they've recommended updates to the MAG CMAC methodologies. And that's included in your agenda item in the, um, in the report. And they've also recommended some new methodologies uh, for new project types. <clears throat> Next slide. So with Texas A&M's uh, recommendations for improvements to the MAG methodologies, um, they have now included the most recent EPA moves three. This is the motor vehicle emissions model. EPA released that in, in the winter uh, last year, and uh, so they have now included that. They've also uh, provided some up updates to uh, some default values uh, where applicable in our existing methodologies. And they've added uh, some uh, off-network start emission calculations uh, where they felt that that was uh, missing. Uh, they've expanded uh, vehicle types and fuel types. Um, they've also included some uh, US EPA uh, information on diesel retrofit methodologies. And this includes uh, these technologies such as diesel oxidation catalysts and diesel particulate fillers. And they've added eight new methodologies. Next slide. These new methodologies include uh, methodologies for evaluating uh, projects that improve bicycle and pedestrian facilities, uh, flashing yellow arrow signals, um, signal prioritization for transit vehicles, uh, signal preemption projects for emergency vehicles, um, freeway wrongway driver detection systems, um, there's also uh, methodologies in there for bicycle and pedestrian detection and priority signalization systems. The acquisition of uh, new buses to expand the fleet or replace existing buses and regional systems management and operations projects. Next slide. And so, um, with the new methodologies, I just wanted to uh, provide you with uh, an example of, uh, of the first new methodology. And this is for the calculation of bicycle and pedestrian facilities, which is an improved facility. This, um, this particular example is to convert a pedestrian facility into a bicycle lane. And so the project length, um, actually the project cost is uh, for the federal amount, is sixty-five thousand um, dollars. The project length is one point five miles. It provides the um, the weekday average daily traffic. Um, the methodology uh, 
asked for the number of activity centers with when, within one quarter and one half mile of the project. And whether the, um, the paving is uh, located within four miles of a PM10 monitor. Next slide. And so for the actual calculation itself, um, in the first line, we're calculating the vehicle um, trips replaced. And the next, um, that uh, gets uh, booked into the next calculation, which is to um, estimate the vehicle miles of travel reduced. And then that uh, re uh, answer gets booked into the vehicle uh, emission reductions calculation. And so in that equation, um, the first line is to um, estimate the emissions associated with the light duty emission factors. And then that gets uh, um, included with the off network emission factors for a total of 0.1, kilograms per day. Um, to calculate the uh, cost effectiveness, we, we also include the cost recovery factor. Here's abbreviated as CRF. And then, um, and lastly, then the last line, we've got the cost effectiveness where we're calculating the dollars per metric ton. Next slide. So Meg did um, host a webinar on the draft working paper on February 11th, 2021. Texas A&M presented uh, the newest um, methodologies at the webinar. Uh, we, MAG also had invited members of the MAG Management Committee to, for the, to the webinar. Uh, we received several comments at the webinar. Uh, these have been included, incorporated rather, into the final report. And so the next step is today uh, with the Air Quality Technical Advisory Committee review. And then um, it is anticipated that uh, an upcoming uh, MAG call for projects in the August, September 2021 timeframe will be, uh, will be first using these um, updated methodologies. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Dean. Are there any questions? All right, gonna, hearing, sorry, oh, this, is my, this is Martin Lucero, the city of Surprise. And I was just wondering by chance, are we going to be able to um, kind of get a little bit breakdown more if we wanted to, just to kind of understand that a little bit more on the methodology and then how this kind of works in with the conformance model that they have to run for new projects? If I just had questions, could I get, who would I call to get some answers and just trying to understand this, understand this a little bit deeper, I guess. Um, certainly, um, um, Mr. Chair and Mr. Lucero, you know, if you have any, um, you know, questions on the newest methodologies or any methodology for that matter, um, you can uh, begin by contacting myself. If I don't know the answer, we'll find the answer for you. All right. Any other questions? All right. I think that will wrap up this agenda item and we'll move on to agenda item number six, which is the update on the 2022 Serious Area Particulate Plan for PM10 for the West Pinal County non-attainment area. And Matt Poppin from MAG will give that presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. If we could go ahead and pull up that presentation, I can get going. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, thank you. Go ahead and go to that slide. So for this update, um, it's going to be focused on, I mentioned it briefly at our last uh, committee meeting in February, um, but for this update, I'm going to be focusing on the work that has been done for the emissions inventory for the West Pinal uh, PM10 non-attainment area to date. Um, in review, um, EPA had recommended to us uh, for the base year inventory for the serious area plan to pick a year between 2016 and 2018. Uh, 2016 through 2018 was the period, the monitoring data that EPA used to reclassify the West Pinal County PM10 non-attainment area from a moderate area to a serious area. So EPA wanted a year from there. Uh, 2017 was selected as the base year. Uh, this is also the year when uh, uh, counties prepare the periodic emissions inventory or the national emissions inventory. So this was a, a reason why we chose 2017 out of those three years. Um, work is still ongoing to develop this base year inventory. It is not completely finished. Um, and we're developing it uh, jointly um, with inputs and information being received from Arizona Department of Environmental Quality, the Pinal County Air Quality Control District, and MAG. So based upon the information received to date, uh, we have developed a preliminary draft 2017 base year PM10 emissions inventory for the West Pinal County non-attainment area. Next slide, please. So I do want to highlight that this is a preliminary draft inventory and the estimates, the emission PM10 emission estimates in this inventory are subject to change as additional information becomes available. And just for example, I have included some um, items where information is uh, will be forthcoming, um, which will affect the emission estimates I'm going to share with you today. Um, one of those is that uh, MAG is incorporating a new activity-based transportation model, and that will affect the on-road mobile emissions, your um, exhaust emissions, tire and brake wear emissions, as well as emissions from, from paved roads. Um, emissions from unpaved alleys are still being evaluated for uh, how best to include those in the inventory or whether to include those in the inventory. They were not included uh, specifically in the inventory done for the moderate area plan. Um, we're still waiting on some emissions data from test tracks, um, some large vehicle test tracks to include in the inventory. And we're still evaluating the best uh, soil disturbance percentage, uh, percentages for windblown dust. Um, we have some default values from when the monitored area was, plan was done, and we're still evaluating whether it makes sense to use those default values or some newer values. Next slide, please. I also want to really highlight that the draft inventory I will be sharing with you today is an annual inventory for the entire non-attainment area. Um, so it covers the, uh, the entirety of the West Pinal um, County PM10 non-attainment area. It's really important to note that we will also be developing additional smaller scale inventories for the monitors, for the PM10 monitors that need to be modeled as part of an attainment demonstration. Um, so we, we, we will be developing uh, modeling domains. These are smaller areas around the specific monitors that need to be modeled. So the three monitors that will likely be modeled are Pinal County Housing Monitor, the Stanfield Monitor, and the Hidden Valley Monitor. So you, uh, emissions inventories unique to the area surrounding those monitors will be developed. And those monitors will be design day specific. It won't be the annual emissions that occur around that monitor. It'll be emissions on an exceedance day that happened in 2017 or maybe 16 or 18, depending on the design day that is uh, selected. Those inventories will also reflect the dominant meteorology on that day. So low wind 
inventories will obviously just be focused on activity-based emissions, whereas if it's a high wind exceedance day, windblown dust would be the dominant source of emissions on that design day. So because of all of those factors, I think it's really important to know ahead of time before viewing the annual, annual inventory that these attainment modeling inventories will look very different than this um, annual inventory I'm going to show you. So they can vary significantly. The percentages that uh, PM10 emission source contribute to an exceedance can be very different than the annual um, inventory that I'm going to be showing you next. As we know, especially under low wind conditions, PM10 is very much a localized pollutant. It gets generated by activities and it gets lofted into the air, but it does not travel very far. So those emission sources nearest the monitor are the most important when doing an exceedance day modeling. Um, and that, and again, that often results in an emissions inventory that looks very different than a county or than a non-attainment area wide inventory. All right, next slide, please. Okay, so here is the pie chart for uh, a draft 2017 base year PM10 emissions inventory for the entire West Pinal County non-attainment area. Uh, the current total is 37,072 tons of PM10 for the year. I'll kind of start from the top of the pie chart and go, go clockwise, kind of talking about the categories. So the dark green category is um, agricultural tilling and harvesting that um, for the whole year, that's about 1,700 tons or close to 5% of the inventory. Um, feedlots or com confined animal feeding operations are 1,285 tons, about 3.5% of the entire inventory for the year. Dairies are uh, 175 tons. And then as we keep moving, you'll see kind of a, a gray slice that is paved road dust. That is 873 tons or about two and a half percentage points. The largest category by far for the entire non-attainment area is unpaved road dust. 26,919 tons or almost 73%. Now within unpaved road dust, there are some subcategories in there as well. There's public unpaved roads, there's private unpaved roads, there's commercial agricultural roads, and then there's um, trails. So um, public roads, public unpaved roads are approximately about 26% of unpaved road dust. Private unpaved roads are about 42% of unpaved road dust. Um, agricultural farm roads are about 29%. And then the trails are, are approximately about 3%. And then as we continue clockwise, we have categories, smaller categories. We have unpaved parking, which is about 1%. On-road mobile emissions, those are, that's um, emissions directly from the tailpipe, uh, tire wear and brake wear. That's 171 tons or about 0.5%. Non-road mobile emissions, these are exhaust emissions from uh, agricultural equipment, construction equipment, industrial commercial equipment. So these are exhaust emissions, again, air, aircraft, uh, locomotives. That's about 144 tons or about, again, about a half of a percent. Construction, product, uh, construction projects, which include residential, commercial, road construction, are 1,086 tons or about 3% for the entire year. Permitted sources, so these are all of the uh, sources that Pinal County Air Quality Control District issues a permit for for PM10. So there are a variety of different types of activities and sources in there. But as a total, all of the permitted sources are about 537 tons or 1.5%. We've got two categories that we've got a category of open burning that includes like trash burning and agricultural burning at 56 tons fuel combustion. That is um, both residential commercial and industrial fuel combustion for home heating and 
industrial processes at 75 tons. Waste disposal is a category. Um, it's a new category in this inventory. It was one that was pulled from the EPA's national emissions inventory. So using EPA factors, there's 167 tons associated with waste disposal. Commercial cooking, uh, char broiling, that type of activity is 100 tons per year. Um, there's some other miscellaneous small pro uh, processes that are 12 tons per year. And then lastly, we have this category of windblown dust, which on an annual basis is about 9% of the total pie. Uh, next slide, please. So what I also wanted to uh, provide to the committee today was a comparison of how this annual emissions inventory for the non-attainment area compared to the emissions or inventory that were developed in the moderate area plan. So uh, in the 2015 moderate area plan. So for that inventory, the base year was 2008 and the attainment year at that time was 2018. So where there were two inventories developed, one for the base year and one for when attainment was projected in 2018. So the green columns are the base year, the blue columns are the attainment year, and the yellow column is the current draft 2017 base year. And this is just provided for some comparison um, to see how things may or may not have changed. Um, if we look at tilling and harvesting, we can see um, the numbers are, are less uh, compared to the base year and the attainment year. This is due um, primarily to there are there is less there is less um, agricultural land than when the base year was developed, and there were some uh, agricultural BMP controls in place that weren't there prior to the base year. Feedlots. Um, the primary reason for the reduction in feedlot emissions is there's been a significant reduction in the number of cattle. Um, so that's where the primary reduction in feedlot emissions come from when compared to the base year and the attainment year. Dairies are relatively con consistent. Uh, paved road dust is, is um, somewhat consistent as well. Unpaved road dust has gone down pretty significantly. There has been a lot of uh, paving projects and stabilization projects that have occurred since the base year. And also there was some re, um, recategorization of some roads as well. Some of the other smaller categories are, are relatively consistent. The unpaved parking is a little bit higher. Uh, the on-road mobile and non-road mobile are, are pretty consistent um, when compared to other values. Permitted sources are, are less than they were in 08 and 18. Uh, wildfires, there were no actual wildfires within the non-attainment area in 2017, which is why that's zero. Um, fuel combustion and open burning, those kind of vary from year to year, which you see the, um, the differences there. Waste disposal, commercial cooking, and miscellaneous processes, those are new categories that weren't in the prior inventories. These were categories pulled from EPA's national emissions inventory, so that's why there is no comparison available. And then lastly, windblown dust. Windblown dust does look a lot smaller than prior um, estimations, and this is due largely because um, in the 2017 inventory, windblown dust has been scaled to match the concentrations at the monitor. So the monitor is showing that roughly about 9% of the PM10 concentrations occur when wind speeds are above 12 miles, 12 miles per hour. So when you look at the entire, all of the PM10 concentrations that occur at, at a monitor, about 9% of those are associated with high winds. So that is why the windblown dust has been scaled on an annual basis to reflect the concentrations that are seen at the monitor. I'm so sorry, concludes my Mr. Chairman, um, Matt, you totally skipped over construction. This is Amanda. Can you please go yes, over? You're right. Thank you. Absolutely.
Okay. Yeah, you're right. Um, so for construction, there are there are uh, a couple reasons that Pinal County provided why the emissions are are lower. One, obviously, 2008 was at the end of that boom cycle, so there was a lot more activity going on in 2008 as compared to 2017. But also the rural effectiveness, the compliance rate for uh, construction sites has increased quite a bit, which means that each individual construction site is, is emitting less PM10 emissions. So that is why the emissions from construction are lower than what they were in the base year and in the 2018 attainment year. Okay, thank you, Matt. You're welcome, Amanda. Yeah, so that concludes my presentation and I am uh, open to any other questions that the committee may have. Thank you, Matt. Um, are there any questions? Okay, if there's no additional questions, uh, we'll go ahead and move on to agenda item number seven, which is the EPA proposed limit, limited approval and limited disapproval on the Arizona Agricultural Best Management Practices Statute and, your, and Rules for West Pinal. Uh, Lindy Bauer from MAG will give that presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. We wanted to let you know that on February 26th, the Environmental Protection Agency published a proposed limited approval and limited disapproval of a revision to the Arizona State Implementation Plan regarding the agricultural best management practices. <clears throat> the practices were designed to meet the moderate non-attainment area requirements in the West Pinal BM10 non-attainment area. Specifically, EPA proposed actions on the revisions to the statutes and also to the regulations for animal operations in West Pinal. The Arizona Department of Environmental Quality has been working diligently to address these issues. <clears throat> we wanted to point out that in the notice, EPA indicated that if the limited disapproval is finalized, the Environmental Protection Agency would have to promulgate a federal implementation plan two years after the disapproval, unless the state submits and EPA approves a submission that corrects the deficiencies. In addition, if EPA goes final on this limited disapproval, it would also trigger the Clean Air Act sanctions. The first one would be within 18 months, <clears throat> that's the offset sanction, and followed six months later by the highway funding sanctions. EPA points out that a sanction will not be imposed if EPA determines that a subsequent SIP revision re corrects these deficiencies satisfy identified in the final action before the deadline. So we wanted to point this out to you. Um, we, it's our hope that in working on these issues with the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality and the Agricultural Best Management Practices Committee, that these corrections can be folded into the upcoming serious area plan for PM10. Thank you very much. Thank you, are there any questions? All right, hearing no questions, we'll move on to agenda item number eight, which is the MAG Air Quality Technical Advisory Committee Vice Chair Vacancy Letters of Interest. Lindy will give that as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. We are always very grateful and appreciative of the leadership of this MAG Air Quality Technical Advisory Committee. The chair and vice chair appointments are due to expire on June 30th, 2021, according to the MAG Committee Operating Policies and Procedures. Now, these are two-year terms. <clears throat> we are fortunate that Megan Sheldon, our vice chair, is very interested and would like to ascend to the chair position. So at this point in time, 
we will be soliciting letters of interest for the vice chair vacancy. The letters of interest are due to be submitted by Monday, May 3rd, 2021. We included in your agenda packet a memo that describes who you would need to send the letters to. So we hope that this will be helpful to you. Again, we're always very grateful for the leadership that we have on this committee. Thank you. Thank you, Lindy. Um, are there any questions related to that? All right. Uh, we'll move on to agenda item number nine, Valley Bike Month and Spring Kit. That'll be given by Abigail Cooksey Williams from Valley Metro. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Next slide. Next slide. Since Valley Metro was formed in the 1980s, we've celebrated bicycling for fun and transportation every spring. April is Valley Bike Month, and although things will continue to look a little bit different, we are still celebrating pedal power. Next slide. Oh, back up, there you go. We're excited to share the 2021 Valley Bike Month artwork with you. This piece was designed by local artist Ashley Macias. You may have seen some of her other work on downtown murals and industrial space. She is primarily known for surrealism and wanted to convey that in a bright and modern way. This art shares the excitement and fun of Bike Month and the overall vibrancy of life in Phoenix. She often uses nature combined with solid functions, in this case, parts of bicycles and gears, to show vivid interaction of the environment we live in. The figures in the art are said to represent us as a whole, made up of those elements. I would also like to share a statement from her that we are including on the actual Bike Month poster. Next slide. Quote, as a Phoenix artist, I find enjoyment in capturing the surreal landscape and movement of my human environment, encapsulating something vibrant and more than meets the eye. My goal is to bring community and art together with each brushstroke while exploring the many exciting elements of the desert city. Next slide. There are many aspects and pieces that go into promoting Valley Bike Month. We send out a transportation coordinator kit that includes materials, both print and electronic, to promote riding a bike as both a commute option as well as for short trips. We share the message that bicycles are a great mode to consider for many types of trips and for exercise. The kit also includes a schedule of activities. And while, again, there's not a downtown bike to work day, there are still some great activities going on in April. Cities from Glendale to Chandler are hosting smaller rides and events. There's also a complete schedule on our website. We will be offering a Valley Bike Month Pledge to Ride from March 1st to the 31st, along with a month-long challenge, individual or teams. We're even featuring electronic badges that can be earned in tracking all alternate mode commutes. All of this can be found on our sharetheride.com website. We're also thrilled to unveil a special Valley Bike Month Challenge winner virtual background that was created for winners to have bragging rights during their day-to-day -day virtual meetings. And we know that we all have a lot of those. Next slide. You may also see the artwork featured around town, either on our bright center train wrap on light rail or even on a few faces with our highly coveted gaiters. Valley Bike Month is a great reminder of the possibilities of bicycles, bicycle to work, for fitness, or just for fun. It's a great workout and efficient means of transportation that doesn't pollute or cause congestion. And it offers built-in physical distancing, a winning combination all the way around. Next slide. Thank you for inviting me today to share this with you. My contact information is listed and feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions or any, need any additional detail. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? This is Mario from the city of Goodyear. Just 
great presentation and um, thank you for prom promoting um, cycling. Thank you. All right, any other comments or questions? All right, thank you very much. We'll move on to agenda item number 10, which is a request for future agenda items. Topics or issues of interest that the Air Quality Technical Advisory Committee uh, would like to have considered for discussion at future meeting. Um, if you have any of those at this time, um, you can uh, let us know. Our next meeting is tentatively scheduled for Thursday, April 22nd, 2021. Um, does anyone have any topics for discussion at our next meeting? All right, well, if something comes to mind, just let us know. Um, and our last item is uh, just thank you for attending our meeting this afternoon. And at this time, the meeting is adjourned. Have a great afternoon. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.